Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Sayam Pathak and I'm a CNCF ambassador working as director of technical evangelism at SIVO and uh, very excited to have um, Swanand uh, from uh, Cloud Casa. We'll be discussing a very interesting topic today, which is Kubernetes backup and restore using Cloud Casa uh, and the Longhorn as the storage class. So uh, before we start, the usual stuff, uh, be nice to each other in the chat, share where you are joining from. Uh, there is very awesome giveaway today, which is, um, uh, I think, eight Amazon vouchers, um, which is about 1,000 INR in value, uh, which so you, anybody can fill, actually. So you can fill this form, which I'm sending just now. I hope I'm sending the right link. Let me just double check. Yep. So that's the right link. Uh, just make sure to fill that form. Uh, it's still going. Somehow my chat is very slow and it is. Let me post it again. Else I'll directly post from YouTube chat. Okay. Somehow StreamYard is not sending the chat to you folks so what i'll do is i'll send directly from here cool now you should be seeing uh, a form link make sure to fill that form link and uh, then only you'll be like entered in the raffle and we'll do the giveaway in the end so make sure you are live uh, till the end it's just one hour and in one hour we have to cover a lot and in the end we'll be uh, you know uh, throwing away the uh, winners winners so uh, again, be nice to each other in the chat and make sure to subscribe to the channel and, you know, like the video, share it with your friends, uh, tag uh, and share about uh, Swanand uh, and anything you learned in this particular session because that's very important. Um, so these live streams are pretty cool. Um, they are chilled, live demos, everything included. Um, so if anything goes wrong, we fix them live. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, Swanand will answer them for live. So that mm -hmm. is like straight directly from the heart, nothing pre-planned. So you, you have everything going on live. So make sure you ask uh, your Q&A uh, live and make sure to fill the form as well. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. There are a lot of people. Uh, let me put you on the screen because you joined. So you deserve to be here. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, everyone. Let me just put everyone. Cool. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. That is awesome. Nice. So today we are going to cover um, the very important aspect in, in Kubernetes ecosystem, which is backup uh, and restore, which is really very important when you talk about stateful sets, uh, workloads that requires uh, PV, PVG, uh, because things can go wrong. Things always will go wrong. It's just a matter of time when they will go wrong. Uh, so you need to have a solution that can help you easily back up your Kubernetes workloads and help you restore them easily. Uh, so saying is easy, doing is hard. Uh, but uh, I, I think uh, that's where, where this particular stream will, will help you out. So Swanan uh, came up with a very interesting storyline of you know, kind of how you, what actually first the terminologies to get the terminologies right, like what the Kubernetes backup restore means. Then we'll dive into uh, how you can uh, do the backup restore using existing open source tooling. What are the existing open source tools and what are the limitations? Uh, because obviously there were limitations that by Cloud Casa was built. Uh, and then Swanan will jump into Cloud Casa telling its features, how it is solving the existing problems and how it is making it super simple to take the backup and restore. And then we definitely will uh, dive into uh, a very cool demo, uh, which Swanand has prepared. Uh, again, hope it works. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Uh, so that will be interesting. And before handing over to uh, Swanand, I just would like to give a shout out to Cloud Casa. Uh, they have been a long supporter of my work of this channel they have been an org member for a long long time so a big thanks and a shout out to uh, cloud casa make sure to check them out uh, because they they have supported my work and they deserve um, you know shout out obviously so thank you so much for tuning in stay tuned for the next one hour we'll be learning about kubernetes backup restore using cloud casa and a lot many concepts and terminologies included and make sure to fill the form if you want to get 
uh, in you know in the raffle and stuff. Uh, I know that those things are always complex and I always forget to you know uh, tell, but it is there. So make sure to submit that uh, and share the stream. Share your learnings and tag uh, me and Swanand and Cube Simplify. Everything you need to tag. Prerequisites always people ask. Prerequisites for this workshop is you should know Kubernetes. And if you do not know Kubernetes, why you do not know Kubernetes? Because there are Cube Simplify workshops. I gave a four hour Kubernetes workshop, so you should definitely know Kubernetes. So uh, if you like, you should definitely know Kubernetes and everything else will be a piece of cake for you. So uh, Swanan, tell us about yourself. What do you do? And then let's get started with Kubernetes backup and restore. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Sayam. Uh, it, 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 it's an honor. Uh, and a great privilege uh, to be uh, uh, in a session alongside you. Um, thanks for allowing me. Uh, and uh, the second most uh, exciting thing for me today is to talk about backup and restore. Uh, we have been doing this for, uh, as, as a company, Catalogic, we have been doing it for the past 20 years. Um, we have been involved in building a product for uh, no, almost four years now. Uh, all we do day in day out is work on building a product that uh, helps people protect their data, um, helps uh, uh, restore their Kubernetes clusters. A lot more actually, but what we are really proud of is uh, that we help save people's time. Uh, we help people uh, sleep peacefully at night. Um, uh, and that's uh, the most important thing that keeps driving each one of us in our team. Um, backup and restore, these are, these are extremely simple words uh, to say. Um, we have been hearing them from, from the point in time where uh, people recognize data is important. Um, otherwise, why would anyone back up uh, and forget about restore? Um, so um, right from that point, uh, until today, where data is the new oil, it's the most precious resource uh, that's that's available with any enterprise, with any uh, entity, and that's that's the real asset. Well, if that is the real asset, you do better protect it. Uh, we do protect our assets. We do we do keep all the ornaments uh, 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 in in a safe locker inside a bank. Right? Why do we do that? Because it's precious. Uh, the same is the story with, with data now. Um, I, I'm sure it's much more precious than gold these days. Uh, so, uh, so that's the reason why um, we start thinking about protecting it. And, and, and here's where uh, the terms backup, uh, restore uh, come in. Um, uh, enterprises have been doing that for physical machines. They have been protecting data that is present on physical machines, later on virtual machines um uh, recently virtual machines running on the cloud uh, these days data is generated at a variety of uh, from a variety of locations and and it's it's also distributed uh, uh, quite um, extensively across many locations so uh, gone are the days where you thought that okay i need to protect my data okay i need to back up this disk i just need to copy the contents of one disk into the other and i'm i'm, I'm good uh, that's that's no longer the story. It's uh, uh, as I said, it's it's much more complex. You have data that is distributed across the globe, across various regions, um, and you when you want to protect it, you want to protect it uh, uh, from 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 wherever it it, it is present. Um, well, the protection is only good enough uh, until the point uh, that you are able to restore it. Um, so uh, just as backup is important, um, restores are, are, are equally important. Um, I'll, I'll go a step further and um, uh, uh, mention that being able to test my restore is, is, is probably a lot more important than, than running the actual restore when I need it. Um, it's, it's, it's important because uh, you may be taking a, a backups of your data. Um, uh, sometimes you really don't know um, how those backups went because these jobs, sometimes they run into a few hours. 
um, uh, you you may be reported or may not be reported about about any failures that are going on there. Um, whatever plan that you have made to protect your data, uh, it needs to be tested at times, uh, and 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 you need and you can only test it with uh, uh, with full guarantee if you decide to restore it. And um, uh, you your restore shouldn't be shouldn't be too difficult, right? Uh, the moment they become too difficult is when people decide not to restore it. It, it, it. It's complex. We know that the snapshot is there. We'll find a way to restore it when the time comes. Um, well, that's that's a strategy, but it, 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 it's not the best strategy, in my opinion. So your restores need to be as effective uh, and as simple as possible uh, to be able to test it in between failures so that uh, you can sleep peacefully. Um, uh, and and when the time comes, uh, you know that the restore is going to work because you have you have tested it uh, sufficiently. So um, this is about backup and restore at a very high level. Okay, uh, we we haven't even got to Kubernetes yet. So um, let's come back to Kubernetes. Um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm assuming that folks have uh, some background in Kubernetes. Let me start this story with my introduction to Kubernetes. Um, I came from a background uh, where the world is entirely made up of virtual machines. Uh, you used to have data stores. Uh, virtual disks uh, get carved out of those data stores. Uh, they get attached to your virtual machines. And um, uh, you, you can take a snapshot of the data store or the virtual disk on them at any point in time. The compute and memory used to be um, uh, managed by the virtual machines, and those virtual machine configurations can be can be backed up as well. So, um, when I came to Kubernetes, uh, during my initial days, uh, I was under the impression that everything is ephemeral in Kubernetes. Uh, nothing nothing is uh, uh, I, I mean everything gets created on the fly you do what you have to do with it and you just get rid of it um, and um, that's that's actually great because then then you can very effectively scale out uh, scale up uh, as you want uh, and 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 similarly shrink uh, uh, in, in in size so you get this flexibility uh, and and everything is good um until the point um where uh, the question arose okay so you can extremely easily uh, uh scale out uh, your compute and memory resources um what what about the storage um in, in a virtual machine there's a virtual disk um uh, and uh, but 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 what's the equivalent in kubernetes um so uh, when containers come up uh, uh, in in the pods, um, you might have some storage attached to those containers. Um, you write something to it, but if the pod is gone, the container goes down. Um, whatever you have stored um, simply goes away. So um, you need you need a way to persist your storage. Whatever uh, your pods write to the storage, the storage needs to uh, uh, store it, replicate it, so on and so forth. Uh, and and this is where the concept of data protection came in. Um, uh, just as in case of virtual machines, even in the case of Kubernetes, you can very easily, relatively very easily, recover your lost configuration. Uh, your compute and memory configuration can be easily brought up. Um, but what's important is to uh, store the data, uh, protect the data that is there on your persistent volume. Uh, here comes the new concept of a persistent volume. In Kubernetes, you can you can have uh, you can create volumes which which persist data uh, across. Uh, I, I mean, they have decoupled your compute and memory entirely from storage. So your pods can go up and uh, uh, and and go down at any point in time. But whatever they write gets gets written to actual storage. Um, so um, 
So it is important to uh, protect this persistent storage. Uh, persistent storage in Kubernetes, I'll, I'll quickly go over a few uh, concepts about Kubernetes because they'll eventually help us uh, understand the real meaning of backups in Kubernetes. Um, so um, imagine that you have an, you have an actual storage uh, and, and you've carved out volumes uh, from that storage. Uh, so the concept of a storage system and a volume uh, is, is, is on the storage side, okay? Uh, if you want to consume that volume, which you have just created or carved out from the storage, if you want to consume it inside a container, which is running inside a pod, um, you need to mount that volume uh, on on uh, inside the container. That is how you'll be able to access that volume. You'll be able to write to it and read from it. Um, two resources primarily uh, uh, play an important role in, in uh, uh, bridging the gap between the compute and memory, which is your container and pods, and the actual storage. One is known as a persistent volume. Um, as you guys must uh, already be knowing, Kubernetes is just a collection of resources, right? So one type of resource, which is known as a persistent volume, uh, is uh, the reflection of the actual volume inside the Kubernetes environment, OK? Uh, if you want to draw parallels, uh, you might have a volume on the storage system and uh, that volume is converted into a virtual disk in, in, in terms of a um, uh, virtual machine kind of an environment. So um, in Kubernetes, as I said, persistent volume resource, uh, PV in short, is, is uh, the representation of the actual volume on the storage. Um, the names are slightly complex. Uh, I mean, uh, Kubernetes could have named them better, but for um, for uh, I mean at, at, at present it's it, it's the way it is. Persistent volume resource is the reflection of the actual volume, whereas there's another resource called persistent volume claim, which uh, which binds uh, this persistent volume resource to the consumer, which is eventually the pod. Um, so uh, uh, persistent volume claim uh, sits in between uh, your pod and the uh, persistent volume resource. Uh, having understood this, um, it, it won't be too difficult to figure out that if you want to protect data, you uh, you want to protect three components. You, you want to protect the compute and memory, which is the pod and the actual pod configuration. Uh, you want to uh, protect uh, the bridge and the representation of the persistent volume inside Kubernetes, which happens to be the persistent volume claim and the persistent volume. And uh, eventually, um, you want to protect the data on, on, on the storage system. Um, the, sto uh, the storage system has its, has its own way uh, or methodologies to protect data. Um, uh, the storage system could actually take a snapshot of of its volume. A snapshot is is uh, quite literally, uh, as its name suggests, right? Whenever you have a camera in hand, you 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 take a snapshot. It's a picture. That picture is a point in time representation of what the camera sees. Uh, that's exactly what 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 happens uh, on the storage system as well. When you ask the storage system to take a snapshot, it will record the state of all the data that is there on the volume at that point in time. Okay, um, snapshots these days are mostly instantaneous, um, uh, but um, I mean the advantage, of course, is is that it really doesn't take time. Snapshots happen really quickly. Um, but the disadvantage there is that the snapshot also resides on the storage system. Um, and what happens if the storage system goes down? Well, your volume has gone down. Don't be surprised if the snapshot of that volume is also gone because it, it, it's present on the storage system. Storage systems uh, have various ways to come around this problem. Um, it, 
they decide to replicate their snapshots to an offshore location, so on and so forth. But essentially, the snapshot is still there on the storage system. You entirely rely on the storage system to take uh, to be able to recover the actual volume from the snapshot. Uh, there's there's another way to protect the data, uh, and uh, sometimes people call it the actual backup. So uh, whenever people talk about data protection, uh, two terms quite frequently come up. One is the snapshot, and the other is the backup. Um, backup uh, actually means that um, you replicate the actual data on the volume. Okay, so whatever you see on the volume. You just make an exact copy of the data. Uh, the copies can be full copies or they can be incremental copies. These copies can either be on the same storage system, they can be uh, pushed off to some other location, uh, or, or you can put it in an object store. Uh, basically, what you're trying to do is make an exact copy of the data and keep it somewhere where probably no one else would, would, would ever be able to touch it until the point where you decide to, to fetch it yourself. Um, Backups generally uh, uh, take some more time. They are not instantaneous. But uh, as I said, the obvious advantage is that you, you have the uh, copy of the actual data. Uh, you, you do not have to rely on the storage system. Even if the storage system goes down, the actual data might be present on some object store in, 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 on a completely different continent altogether. Um, how wonderful is that? Okay, so um, you can uh, uh, sleep peacefully at night, knowing that your data is safe on a completely another uh, uh, continent, as I said, in probably a few days, also on a completely different planet. But 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 that's how uh, um, fanatic people sometimes do get about the most precious resource like this data. Okay. Um, so that's the real difference between a snapshot and 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 a backup. People have their own names, but but in terms of the concept, uh, this is the primary difference between a storage and a backup. Cloud Casa also has different names for these concepts, but uh, essentially one involves taking a point in time snapshot of the data on the volume, and the other involves transfer of data from the volume to uh, to some other location. Uh, use cases again snapshots are generally used for local failures um, uh, and and where you quickly want to take a, a backup and you you want it to quickly restore it as well typical use cases are dev and test environments where you quickly want to replicate what's going on on the production you take a snapshot of the production environment come back and restore it uh, on, on another cluster where you are able to exactly replicate what what was going on on the production quickly fix a bug, push in the fix, and, and, and deploy the fix. Um, all of this happens really quickly. So the best use case for, for having snapshots is, um, is, is, is dev and test. Um, uh, again, uh, what snapshots uh, do is that they, they allow you to take frequent backups. Uh, here is where your RPO and RTO comes into the picture. Um, it, it, you can take snapshots every 10 minutes. Okay, so essentially what it means is that um, if you take a, a snapshot backup, uh, uh, sorry, if you take a snapshot every 10 minutes, at the most you will lose 10 minutes of data. Okay, so um, uh, if you want to reduce this window, you can further reduce it to a few minutes as well. Um, uh, and uh, with, with backups, it is generally, uh, okay, I, I, I have my local copies. Which, which are refreshing, say, every 15 minutes or so. But um, every hour or maybe every six hours, I want the data to be shipped off uh, to, to, to some other location. Uh, because shipping of data, data transfer, is, is a complex process. It, it does take time. It does take a lot of resources as well. So you don't want to do it every 15 minutes. But uh, you, can, you can have uh, a schedule where uh, whatever backup and restore solution, data protection solution that you have, uh, it, it, it should allow you to have the flexibility to take snapshots uh, based on uh, a certain schedule and a backup based on, on, on some other. Um, excellent. OK, so we have, we have gone through a few terminology here, uh, snapshot, backup. 
uh, what's what's trending these days is uh, uh, the ability to lock. Okay, so um, just taking a backup is is is, is not sufficient. Uh, these days, people uh, have ways to get access to your actual data, and if they really want to be messy with you, they they can also access the backups that you have. Um, and and then they can do all sorts of things, encrypt them, and and then decide uh, what to uh, I mean how to leverage uh, this act of theirs. Um, but let's not get into that. Uh, what's what's important is that uh, you need to be extremely uh, uh, careful about uh, the way you you are protecting your data, and you also need to be extremely careful about how your protected data or other backups. Uh, are, are secured so that even if someone gets access to your actual data, you can still have your backup and you can restore everything back using your backup. Uh, you can forget about anything of this if if uh, uh, access to your backups uh, also fall into the hands of people who you don't want to mess with. Um, and uh, it is important that you um, be able to secure your backup. And this is where the concept of a lock comes in. Uh, you should be able to lock your backup to a point where even if the administrator decides to do anything with the backup, he won't. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. The administrator has decided to back, back up uh, uh, some piece of information. Let's keep aside uh, Kubernetes for now. And, and whatever backup he has, he tells the storage system, uh, lock, lock this up uh, and let this backup re, uh, be managed by you or be retained until it expires its lifetime. Which means that if you have decided to keep a backup for 10 days, the backup would only go away after 10 days. No one in this world, not even the administrator, would be able to do anything with the backup for those ten days. And uh, this is this is a crucial aspect of data protection. Um, and, um, uh, and 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 one of the deciding factors when you decide to choose uh, the vendor for your data protection needs. Um, locking off the backup uh, is done. Let's move to another terminology, which is generally used uh, when it comes to data protection, and that is about and and about restores is granular restores. Um, okay, I, I I have the backup. I have the backup of of so many things. Okay, uh, but I just want to restore bits and pieces from that backup. Oops, I accidentally uh, removed my persistent volume claim. What do I do? Um, I happen to have five thousand PVCs in my cluster the application has gone down okay what's what's what what are your options you can go to the backup and tell the backup okay restore everything it's going to take a long time to restore the entire backup but if you're able to tell the the data protection system that okay i need pvcs okay uh, and i need this pvc even better if the solution is able to tell me okay this is the li uh, entire list of PVCs that you want. Can you can you choose one of them? And uh, imagine the amount of um, uh, uh, peace that the administrator would get, uh, knowing fully well that even if accidentally someone happens to accidentally delete uh, bits and pieces of of my infrastructure, I'd be able to recover it and recover it quickly, recover it reliably, and uh, uh, Without without too much of a hassle, so um, we have we have covered a few terminologies across uh, the past. Uh, I don't know. I've probably taken a lot of time, half an hour, um, and uh, so um, let's let's move on to the world of Kubernetes. Uh, uh, in fact, let's let's come back to it. We we discussed uh, a lot about the general backup and restore terminologies, the concepts of backup and restore. Um, and um, so applying those concepts on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, if you look at a Kubernetes cluster, as I said, you need to uh, protect the configuration of the cluster so that if you want to bring up the uh, 
uh, cluster if you want to restore it uh, the computed memory needs needs to be restored uh, and the storage needs to be restored so how, how do i how do i fix up my computer and memory okay i i i can take a backup of the entire cluster configuration um, what are the namespaces in it uh, what are the pods deployment replica sets that are there in each of those namespaces uh, i need to be able to restore both cluster scoped resources at the same time namespace scoped resources cluster scoped resources are, are are resources commonly available across all namespaces namespace scoped resources are resources which are contained within the namespace. Uh, so um, irrespective of, of, of the type of the resource, you should be able to restore it quickly. Um, uh, you also need to restore the bridge and uh, uh, between your compute and memory and the storage, which happen to be the persistent volume claims and persistent volume resources. Um, so uh, once the configuration is, is, is uh, restored. The uh, the next point to restore is the actual data, and and how do you restore it? Well, you can go to the storage system and you can ask the storage system to create a volume out of the snapshot which it already has. Else, uh, uh, if if you have diligent enough, have been diligent enough to uh, transfer your data to some other location, uh, you need to have systems in place which will bring back the data. So it's the reverse data transfer that happens from an offshore site uh, to the local site. Uh, and, and, and that's how your storage gets restored. So essentially, um, the summary of the whole story is that if you want to protect uh, data on a Kubernetes cluster, you should be able to take a, a backup of your uh, Kubernetes resources, and you should be able to take a, a backup of your storage. Um, having said that, uh, let's um, move on to the next topic uh, on the agenda today, which is okay. What are the various options that I have today? Imagine that you're 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 a system admin inside an enterprise. Um, uh, your your organization is 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 running an application, uh, and the application is containerized. Uh, it's it's running as uh, uh, pods on the Kubernetes cluster. So you have various namespaces. Uh, if you want to talk in simple terms, you could you could simply have three namespaces. One namespace which will handle the entire databases. The other namespace which will handle the middleware, uh, and a completely different namespace which which handles applications related to your front end. Now all of all of these things need to be um, uh, protect it, right? So, what are your options? Um, I'll, I'll categorize the options uh, primarily into two types. Uh, the first one is um, uh, open source projects. There are there are plenty of them. I'll I'll, I'll mention a couple of them. Um, first one is obviously Valero, uh, which is extremely common. Uh, most people uh, know what what Valero is all about. Uh, it's a simple tool um, which you can use uh, to configure the scope of your backup, um, and uh, it will it will backup your resources, which is the configuration. It will allow you to take snapshots uh, from your storage system. It does allow you to implement the data transfer, which is the actual backup as well. Um, uh, and uh, the other category of uh, data protection solutions, um, according to me, are the ones that are provided by the infra by the platform which is providing your infrastructure. Example: the various cloud providers. Right. So if you go to uh, AWS, Azure, or, or or Google Cloud Platform, if they are allowing you to provision storage from from their uh, platform, they do have tools. Uh, to allow you to take snapshot of those um, uh, uh, of the storage components, uh, for example. So um, for the cloud providers, if, if they are um, provisioning a, a, a volume, for them, quite literally, the provisioning of a volume shouldn't matter if the volume is being used uh, as a virtual disk on 
for a virtual machine or as a persistent volume on the Kubernetes. So for them, uh, the tools that they have to take the snapshots and backups, they are they are always there. Uh, but do they really have the tools to combine the two uh, essentials uh, for a Kubernetes cluster? Do they have the resources to uh, take a snapshot of the Kubernetes configuration uh, along with the storage system? Um, yes and no. Um, each one has their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, but uh, again, uh, for, for the want of time, uh, let me not go into uh, a list of disadvantages of these products because in their own way, uh, these are excellent products. Okay, these these products have been serving people for uh, for, for for quite some time. Um, uh, but what I would really like to emphasize is that uh, when it comes to choosing a data protection solution. Um, you really need to look at what are the requirements of, of your own organization. Um, uh, you need to come up with a list of things that that you absolutely must have in the uh, in the data protection solution. Uh, and wh when you come up with this list uh, and you analyze uh, the uh, tools that are uh, available um, out there, um, uh, you will by yourself get to get to know that. Uh, some of these products uh, uh, fall short. Uh, they they might they might provide you the basic functionality, but at times they they ask you to do so many things uh, to be able to do that. Um, uh, the learning curve of these tools sometimes might get overwhelming. Uh, but the worst worst thing, according to me, is being able to manage. Uh, the data protection solution itself. If it takes a lot of your energy, a lot of your time, and a lot of your resources just to monitor what the data protection solution is doing, it's it's it, it's not really helping you. Um, you need your data protection uh, solution to be a partner uh, in 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 your operations. Whatever you cannot do, the data protection system needs to do it for you. Um, this involves a lot of automation, so on and so forth. Uh, but um, uh, as I emphasize, the first thing is the ease of uh, uh, engaging with a data protection solution, according to me, should be the topmost priority. Uh, uh, and what it will do is it will it will save you your time uh, and and you will be at peace uh, knowing fully well that uh, uh, if you have uh, if your data protection solution has uh, conveyed to you that it has protected something it's really protected uh, and 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 you can restore it um, uh, so saving a lot of time uh, is according to me has to be the first priority uh, and followed by the first priority, uh, then comes things like, okay, is it efficient? Okay, if my backup is going to take three days, it's it, it's really it's it, it's of no use to me, right? So uh, uh, I need I need some backup solution which will quickly do stuff for me, um, and which will which will show me uh, what what it has done. If it's going to take a long time, okay, can it report back the progress so that I'm assured that the backup jobs are not stuck, that the backups are happening. Uh, it, it gives me a fair amount of estimate as to how much time uh, would the job take. Um, even better, what if the storage, uh, what if the data protection system alerts me to a failure? Okay. In CloudCasa, we go a step further. Uh, we don't just alert you to a failure. We proactively fi uh, uh, file a ticket with, with with the support team. The support team is on to the failure of the backup even before you probably, as a user, get to um, uh, know of, of of the failure. Uh, how cool is that? This is how uh, 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 I mean tools like CloudCasa uh, are really differentiate themselves from from all the open source tools or the tools provided by the uh, uh, platforms uh, offer. Um, 
how cool it would it be if 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 your data protection solution knows where your kubernetes cluster is is, is running uh, if 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 it knows that if it's running on a aws um, what are the various regions uh, 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 which are contributing towards your infrastructure how how can i how can i back up all 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 uh, the data that is there across those regions um, when i want to restore it there are there are plenty of occasions where we have seen administrators keep a cluster as a standby cluster just to test the restores okay uh, now uh, with the advent of kubernetes i think i think that's that's absolutely not making sense in any way uh, uh, provisioning a kubernetes cluster getting the pods uh, uh, to be running is should should really be a, a matter of minutes um, so um, tools like 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 cloud casa right they uh, they are they are so tightly coupled with uh, the users uh, that uh, they know what's going to be the next step what is the next expectation of the user okay i've, I've, I've backed up uh, my kubernetes cluster and i want to restore it okay i should be able to restore uh, the actual cluster the configuration and the data with a single click how, how how cool would that be? Uh, I mean, you, you you come to office every Friday. You you look at your day's calendar. Your day's calendar says, okay, test restore today, and all you have to do is 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 initiate the restore, uh, go uh, and 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 have a coffee for yourself when you're when you're back. Uh, not only the restore uh, is is complete, it gives you an entire report what what worked, what didn't. Uh, it, it it created a cluster for you. Uh, it tried the restore, uh, and when everything went well, it tore down the entire cluster. Um, this is the power of uh, automation. Uh, a great differentiator in a tool like like, like Cloud Casa. Uh, uh, the word automation might might uh, seem uh, to be a lot cliche, but um, being able to predict what what the administrator would would want next is is is, is something that uh, uh, that Cloud Casa is really good at. Um, uh, I'll, I'll I'll give you a few examples of that. Um, cloud Casa allows you to to share your uh, uh, your cloud accounts with us. Okay, so so there are a few set of minimal permissions that we require uh, you to give us. Um, and once we have that, we will scan the entire infrastructure. We, we, we know what are the clusters that are that are running using your account. Um, we know the various persistent volumes that are uh, that are being used. Um, and um, uh, you you have the entire inventory in, in front of you. All, all you have to do is um, just pick and choose the clusters, pick and choose the namespaces decide your schedule uh, uh, which namespaces do i want to have uh, uh, backed up uh, 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 maybe uh, twice a day uh, which ones uh, i need uh, to be backed up probably weekly so you, you might have a log server which 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 you might want to back up uh, on a weekly schedule or so uh, and and that's it uh, you you just pick and choose and and then you forget about it um, that is what Cloud Casa does. It, it it gives you an extensive range uh, of configurations uh, which you can use to define the scope of your backup. Um, you get to decide uh, the retention period of those of those backups, and uh, with a single click, there is a list of recovery points in, right in front of you, um, uh, and uh, therefore. Um, yeah, so you can you can use those list of recovery points as well uh, whenever the time comes. Um, so um, ease of access, uh, yeah, true. So uh, thanks thanks for the suggestion. Okay, so I I, I hope one of the slides which I have is, is, is kind of visible. So uh, I'll I'll probably wrap up uh, uh, by by sharing uh, the contents on this slide. Um, cloud Casa, it, it's a smart home in the cloud. 
um, if if you are registered with Cloud Casa, we want we we want you to know that um, uh, just as you have secured your home, uh, uh, the, the Kubernetes clusters are are safe with us as well. Um, uh, some standard set of features like application aware, uh, uh, backups, um, cloud platform aware uh, backups. I, I just gave you an example of a cloud platform aware. Similarly, you have various hooks that that are available, which which can help you to quiet your applications um, uh, before the actual snapshot happens. Um, and uh, with that, you are you're you're assured. Um, application level uh, consistency in your in your backups um, uh, what's 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 even more interesting is that you can if, if, if your if your entire cluster goes down or, or tomorrow if you decide to um, simply migrate your cluster okay so you are uh, running a cluster on a particular platform uh, cloud platform and 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 your company decides okay we are going to shift to to a completely new one, um, uh, tools like Cloud Casa help you do that because they uh, will uh, back up the entire configuration of the clusters. They will back up the entire data, uh, and once these uh, two things are available with Cloud Casa, it's just a matter of selection uh, as to where you want to deploy them. So you just configure the target and. Uh, once the target is configured, the uh, configuration and, and, and data is stored. Um, there are a lot of um, uh, small things like being able to uh, map the storage classes, so on and so forth, because obviously the storage uh, on one platform is not going to be the same on the other. So you should be able to restore uh, by, by, by using various mappings, so on and so forth. Um, and um, so, um, yeah, so that's that's the gist of it. Uh, before I close on Cloud Casa, um, one final uh, uh, consideration is, 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 is about using Cloud Casa. Okay, so Cloud Casa is software as a service. Um, uh, uh, you can uh, just create an account with Cloud Casa. Uh, register your your cluster with Cloud Casa and and start using uh, the uh, snapshot capabilities of, of Cloud Casa on your Kubernetes cluster. Um, if you want to uh, 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 leverage the data transfer capabilities of Cloud Casa, uh, uh, there are various paid plans. And the important thing um, uh, is. Um, that uh, the the pricing model of Cloud Casa is, is is works in such a way that that we uh, decide to bill you based on the amount of data that uh, that is being protected. We we really don't care how many nodes are running there at 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 present. We just look at the size of data that we are protecting, and um, uh, and with that. Um, uh, you can you can choose to uh, use Cloud Casa uh, for the amount of time that you want to uh, protect your data. Um, uh, the payment system is as simple as you go to the pricing section and, and you just swipe your card. Uh, you swipe your card and you decide that the, the tenure and, and your data would be protected. Um, there are plenty of other features of Cloud Casa. Uh, which uh, can be used uh, uh, with your Kubernetes cluster. There are a lot of security-related features, which probably we, we might cover in a separate session. Um, but uh, uh, what I want you to uh, take away from, from this session is that um, if, if you want to protect your Kubernetes cluster, uh, the, the easiest way to do that is is to register that cluster with Cloud Casa, um, and I I really urge each one of you to 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 uh, try it once, uh, and and to provide uh, uh, your valuable feedback. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm sure you would be delighted. Uh, uh, we are extremely delighted with with the amount of effort and and the outcome uh, in the in the last four years. And we really uh, would like to share 
uh, uh, the experience with you. All right. So having said that, we come to the last uh, section of um, uh, today's session, uh, and that is about Longhorn. Uh, and I'll 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 just uh, walk you through um, uh, how Longhorn works with Cloud Casa, um, and uh, I'll walk you through um, the new capabilities of Longhorn. By the way, Sayyam has uh, uh, some excellent uh, videos regarding how Longhorn works with Cloud Casa. He has an excellent blog, uh, which which he'll probably share with with each, with each one of us. Um, and uh, uh, those those blogs and videos uh, uh, go into the uh, details of, of of how Cloud Casa uh, works with 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 Longhorn. What I quickly want to cover during this uh, uh, session is what is Longhorn? Longhorn again for me, it's a um, uh, it's a storage management layer. Okay, you might you might have your volumes attached to the nodes, uh, uh, but 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 you want someone in between who can carve out persistent volumes out of that storage and and uh, provide it to your uh, pods. Uh, that is what essentially Longhorn does, and it's it's an excellent tool. Um, is 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 working very well. Um, Rancher has a nice UI which allows you to deploy uh, Longhorn uh, on your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it's it's very easy to do that uh, if if you have Rancher around. Um, else, uh, you have excellent documentation from Longhorn, um, which. Uh, which allows you to uh, deploy uh, uh, the entire Longhorn system uh, quite easily, I must say, on, on, on any Kubernetes cluster. Um, uh, the important thing to mention here is the version. Uh, uh, from this, uh, version 1.3 onwards, uh, Longhorn supports uh, uh, a snapshot functionality um, uh, through the CSI framework. So Kubernetes has its own framework to be able to take volume snapshots. Um, and uh, with the version 1.3 onwards, Longhorn has given the flexibility to the user that uh, if Kubernetes asks uh, for a snapshot to be taken of a particular persistent volume, do you want me to take a snapshot or do you want me to take a backup? Uh, and uh, this has been made configurable. Um, uh, generally, it is it is it is expected that this be configured to use the snapshot functionality, uh, because Cloud Casa leverages this Kubernetes framework to uh, to take uh, volume snapshots, and volume snapshots, as I described, it just needs to be instantaneous. Um, so uh, make sure that you are using 1.3 onwards, um, and. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly walk you through the general steps that are that are required. You go to Google, you put in Longhorn, you select the 1.3.1 version of it. You um, go to the quick install section. That is where you will uh, land up on, on 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 this particular page. There are a few uh, platform specific. Um, uh, uh, steps that need to be taken, but they are they, they are well documented anyway. Uh, once once this is done, there are a few prerequisites regarding the open iSCSI. Uh, uh, so so you basically need clients which will talk to uh, the target storage system. Um, one is one is the open iSCSI, and the other is the NFS. So you need to have NFS uh, and iSCSI clients configured on each of the nodes. Uh, because the storage from each of those nodes is eventually going to be consumed by Longhorn and it's going to make it available on the pods. Um, again, very detailed steps uh, uh, should not be a problem. Um, you have a nice UI um, uh, which, which you can um, uh, configure. Again, the steps to uh, uh, deploy the UI uh, are, are very explicitly mentioned in a very nice way on this entire documentation. What it gives you is the UI, uh, which looks something like this. Uh, you, you can list all your volumes, a nice representation of, of the snapshots. So, so forth. Um, 
and once once this is done um you would have your longhorn configured correctly uh then all you need to do is is um uh go to uh cloud casa register your um uh, cluster with cloud casa um and just run the backup um let me see if i have this cluster already configured Meanwhile, let's see the infrastructure. Um, so I've created a simple namespace uh with with the sample pvc um right, right. can you increase the font size i will There is a namespace which I've created, test CSI snapshot. Uh, uh, there is a simple pod which is which is running a, a sample application. And um, let's see the PVCs. Okay, so uh, this is the PVC which is consumed by this app. Uh, its uh, storage class being used is Longhorn, uh, and if we are lucky, uh, yeah, it, it's up. So I've just connected to uh, Cloud Casa. You can just go to Google, type in Cloud Casa, and, and you will be brought into the landing page for for Cloud Casa. Uh, I have already registered this cluster. It's a Longhorn GKE. Uh, taking a backup uh, is is as simple as defining a backup. Uh, just give it a name. Uh, select the clusters. Uh, select namespaces. Cloudcast already knows the list of namespaces that are there. You just select the namespace. Uh, you select whether you want to have the persistent volumes uh, being included in the backup or not. Uh, Cloudcast uh, uses the word copy for the actual backup, and 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 snapshot stays as snapshot. So while defining your backup, you can either choose to only take snapshots or take a snapshot and copy. Uh, let's take the simple uh, a snapshot. Uh, just created the backup, and the backup is has, has started. Uh, you can have a look at the backup, the activity log. You can see that uh, the PVC, uh, which we just saw in the test CSI snapshot, uh, it's been snapshotted. Uh, your backup is complete. Uh, duration is 23 seconds. Uh, it gives you the details of of, of the PVC, which uh, which which was protected using a snapshot. Um, and that's it. So you 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 have a you have a very beautiful uh, UI which 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 makes it so easy to to define a backup and take a backup. Um, once you have the backup, you can go to protection. Uh, you can go to recovery points, and here's a list of all all your backups. Okay. Uh, so if, if if I decide that okay, I I I need to restore from this particular backup. Uh, I just need to. Uh, select the namespace which I want to restore. There are various options which will which will help you define the restore. Um, exclude persistent volumes. No. Um, let's give it some name. Uh, 
and I want to restore it to the original cluster, the cluster from where I've, I've, I've brought it. Um, and the restore job runs. Um, the restore port would, would, would obviously finish, but it would end up being partial because Cloud Casa uh, uh, is a non-destructive uh, uh, data protection system. If it finds a resource already there, it's not going to um, uh, try and restore it again. Uh, basically, not overwrite anything that's that's out there. So the restore is complete. You should have your systems up, and uh, that's that's how uh, how easy it is to use Cloud Casa. Um, I just had. Uh, I, I think I received a question. Um, yeah no uh, okay so that's uh, this this brings me to the end of my session i'm already over by two minutes uh over and above by two minutes so apologies for that um uh, hope this this session was useful if you have any questions again uh, so yeah, uh, if, if we can allow folks to ask questions uh, now Yeah, I think it was an uh, amazing um, uh, session and all the things that that was planned by you have been covered uh, really, really well, uh, starting from the scratch. And uh, we, we can see like, uh, you know, uh, people have good comments as well. Uh, so one question uh, is that where are the backups stored? Is it free or is there some bucket like AWS S3? That's an excellent question, and and uh, uh, yeah, apologies for not covering that during the session. Um, uh, yeah, so Cloud Casa uh, has its own storage, uh, uh, and you could you could use Cloud Casa storage. Uh, it, it, it's free until a certain limit. Um, at the same time, uh, we do have enterprises uh, who who want to keep their data secure, and, and they don't want to let their data out of uh, out of their uh, network perimeter in, in in such cases cloud Casa does allow you to have your uh, uh, your target uh, backup targets to be configured privately uh, so the entire uh, uh, set of uh, backup uh, information never leaves your 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 premise it it, it it allows you to be stored on a local object store as well so we have both the options uh, and it, it's really up to the user which which one he chooses uh, to use. Uh, hopefully, I've, I've, I've answered your question. But it was a great question. Thank you. Yep, I think that was that was a superb question. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much uh, uh, for this uh, insightful session, Swan. And I think uh, people now should have got the concept of. Uh, you know, Kubernetes backup, restore, what are different terminologies that you have explained really, really well about snapshotting and backup, what they mean, point in time snapshot, um, and how it's use cases as well. Uh, so which is very important and how the existing tooling helps us to do that and where Cloud Casa itself pictures with a very easy to use and lightweight solution out there with ready to take backups and restore, uh, making things pretty, pretty light and simpler and easy to use. Uh, so I think that that's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, and yeah, Anurag has a question. Can we back up namespace only like cube system? Yes, you, you can, uh, do the names, namespace backup. I, sorry, I, I'm answering that question <laughs> question. Uh, so yeah, you, you can do that. Definitely. Uh, I, I have used it. Uh, so there's a, there's a free tier as well. Uh, I mean, uh, you, you get, uh, so you, you can use that for experimenting and stuff. And when you are like, you know, uh, when you decide like it's, it's perfect use case for you. And your workloads, then you can go to, to, to the uh, very you know transparent kind of pricing plans which Cloud Casa provides. Uh, you can check out the pricing page; it's it's pre uh, pretty decent uh, and uh, straightforward pricing. And they they're nice people as well. I know uh, many people from Cloud Casa, so yeah, so they're good people as well. They love feedback and uh, they they would love to hear what you have uh, your thoughts as well on on the product. Uh, with that, uh, we are not over with the stream yet because there's, there's the most important thing which is the giveaway uh for, which i know like you people are just hanging on because of the giveaway <laughs> just kidding i know you are here for learning uh so i hope you learned something good uh so we we got a lot of entries um at about 20 about 30 31 so 30 so 
uh, can you choose uh, you know eight numbers and i can give you the names random oh, okay. numbers between 1 to 30 one by one because i need to uh, get the names as well all right 27 okay let me go 27 is amrut amrut acharya let me paste that in the chat now yep it works uh next one 13 13 so it's akshay kumar 31 30 till 30 30 okay 30 rishab kumar shri vastav 5 5 akash nagpal 28 28 saloni 15 so how many are done just a second uh, one <laughs> i should check the number i hope it never ends right <laughs> so it's uh amrut one and then you have akshay two rishab three akash four saloni five okay cool we have three more what did you say the last one hmm? almost forgot 15 did i say i have no clue maybe just just tell another one it's fine 15 okay uh, so the, the the next number is uh 22 okay 22 Av- avinash nan 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 tendla i hope i'm pronouncing right sorry if i didn't 8 wait an anyesh 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 do we need more i think we have we have covered one yep i think we have covered uh the eight people so should be should be good so i think akshay I, i'll just announce i don't know if any any got mixed so akash um, akshay An, anyesh saloni uh, avinash rishab and amrut i think it's 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 i think we, we can do one more and last number is 220 20 220 20. so it's sandeep kumar Oh, uh, thank you all for joining in, and I hope uh, you enjoyed the stream and you enjoyed the giveaway as well. It's always fun uh, to you know pick and choose the numbers. Uh, so all the winners will definitely be uh, given the vouchers by Cloud Casa. I have taken your emails, and those will be sent, and uh, they will be processing you the gift vouchers. And congratulations to all the winners, and uh, to those who didn't win, you learned a lot. Uh, so congratulations to you as well uh, so i hope you took the key learnings which are very important from this particular session about kubernetes backup and restore and you would definitely try out cloud casa uh, again thank you once again cloud casa for being a long time partner and supporting my work and my youtube channel and i hope uh, Uh, wish you wish the product all the best uh, and uh, wish you all the best and thank you so much uh, swanan for joining in and explaining in detail about the concepts and cloud casa and an amazing demo um thank you so much it was a pleasure thank you thank you all bye